How come Holy Spirit Fire Conference is going to be so amazing? Too amazing. Extremely amazing. Too, 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 too amazing. Saints, I'm so ready because uh, I have so much power that I'm ready to release on the earth. I have a move that I've scheduled for the earth to touch many. Now, I want to deal with some wisdom on here. There you look like. I want to deal with some wisdom on here. Now, just listen to me. Don't really watch me. Just listen to me. Watch me and listen, but listen more. When you win in a soul, there's something that you got to catch. And you have to remember this when you're winning a soul. Oftentimes, if you're not careful, your attempt to win a soul will have the soul win you. And that's not good. Oftentimes, you forget the position that people are at when you're attempting to win them. And over time, they could become a voice that takes away the fact that you were even one. You can have a friend that you win to your man of God, right? And they'll hear your man of God and they'll say, wow, wow, wow. I like him, I like him. A week go by, they're on fire. Two weeks go by, they're on fire. By the third week, you're like, I notice uh, you're not watching. Uh, yeah, the Lord of the Rings told me. Yeah, I had a, the Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Ring, the Ring Lord. The, the jewelry parlor, partner. The Lord of the Rings, yeah, I had pawned about two bracelets. I pawned about two bracelets so I could get me some hot sauce on my burrito. The Lord of the Rings told me that I, I shouldn't, I should take a break. You know, I'm taking a little break. Lord of the Rings told me, Lord of the Rings. The Rings, Michael. The Rings. The Lord of the, the Rings. The Lord of the Rings told me that I shouldn't really watch him right now. I, I'm taking a break. You know, the spirit of lust done got me, you know. And uh, it's not good for me. I'm going to watch me an older gentleman that that look raggedy and an older gentleman that ain't got no good looks. He, his face look like a grocery bag from Publix. His eyes look like uh, the Adams family. I'm going to watch somebody that ain't got no nice hair, you know, it's hair look like rugby, look like Bill Cosby show in the 70s. It is whatever it was. And then it affect your spirit. It affect your soul. So now you you got a you got you got something that bothering you now. And you was trying to win the soul and it looked like now the soul is winning you because it's bothering you. What I want you to catch in life, I have rarely met anybody on fire for God forever. I'm the only person that I know in the history of my life that stayed on fire for God forever. I'm the only person I know. I'm not saying I'm the only person. I'm the only person I have ever experienced that has never had a moment with fire for God is in question. Let me just tell you this. Many people are, I want to say fecal, but a lot of people are so double-minded. They don't really know if they're on fire for God or what. So, you, you know, God talk about money a lot. Some people are on fire for money. They're not on fire for God. Because if God don't give them money in the next six months, you're going to see them say stuff is fake. Now, that, that never happened with people that's connected to me. But what I'm telling you is that 
Jesus was having a conversation with me and he told me this. He said, son, many people don't know when their heart is wrong. Many people will never know the signs when they have a wrong heart. Oftentimes, even the person with the wrong heart is ignorant that they have a wrong heart. But saints, let me just tell you this. If anything ever changes me from doing what God tells me to do is proof that my heart is wrong. If I come to you right now and say, I'm going to become a tennis player. I ain't preaching no more. I ain't doing no more wisdom broadcast. I didn't hear people talk about me. I'm not going to do no broadcast no more. That's, that's a proof that I'm not pure. Because if, if, if I'm saying that the Lord anointed me to do this and this is my calling and anything can divert me from doing what I just said that the Lord called me to do, it is proof that I'm not pure, my heart not right. What I'm telling you is that when you're winning a soul, always remember the fact that the soul may choose not to be won. Do you let that bother you? You keep on going on with Jesus. You keep on rejoicing that God gave you a man of God. You keep on rejoicing at the fact that you've been enlightened, that wisdom is comprehensible to you. You praise God that your eyes are open up. Today I was thanking the Lord on my face because I developed this divine ritual of pinning my face to the ground because I know the level of power that God has given to me. But I show the Lord that it don't matter the level of power. It don't matter how nice my shoes are or how nice my clothes are. I'd rather get those messed up to praise you than to ever think that I'm too high. But I was realizing for years I've been doing this. And I realized some people can't even do it for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, two months, two years. I, I realized people don't have no heart. And so I, I was thinking about it. It's a privilege that your heart could have eternity in it. My God, don't you love that? Think about that. That's wisdom. Your heart got eternity in it. You don't faint. You not who you are for a time. You don't fulfill God's assignment for a time. Like this is you. And, and ain't nobody can determine whether or not you're going to do it because you're not basing it off of them. No way. It's Jesus, the one that called you, anointed you, chosen you. And so everything that you're doing is driven by Jesus. I was thinking about it today. I can do stuff for people that hate me. I can do stuff for people that don't like me. I can do stuff for people that don't have the right heart. And I realized, why could I do that? Because I'm not looking at their dumb behind. I'm looking at Jesus, and I'm looking at the fact that my allegiance is to Jesus. It's not to them. Because if, if it was to them, you won't do it. But because it's to Jesus, and Jesus don't change, and you love Jesus with everything, you don't change. But what I'm telling you is that as a child of God, a lot of you all have not prepared yourself for people that are double-minded. So when you encounter them, they trouble you, they affect you. They, they make you lukewarm indirectly. You see that? They make you lukewarm indirectly. So it's not like they telling you to become lukewarm but you become lukewarm because you see that at one point it looked like they was on fire. And then the next point is like, what the hell? What I'm telling you is that prepare yourself for lukewarm people and double-minded people. Because I have rarely ever met in my life anyone that could stay on fire for God faithfully. I've rarely met anyone. I know some of you all have never met nobody. I'm probably the only person you do know that over time, never change. I've met many people that have excellent speech, but I have never met anyone hardly that has continual excellent reach. 
excellent speech will not get you to heaven. It's excellent reach that's going to get you to heaven. And I've rarely met anyone with the consistency to do what God wants without any condition. Some of you all, you want to get married, you want to have children, you want to be in ministry, you want to be a leader, you want to be a prophet, you want to be someone. But, but let me tell you something. Are you a conditional person? Do you do things because something is done for you? Well, you're not leader material. You're not prophet material. You're not apostle material. You're not marriage material. Do you only do something nice because something nice being done to you? You're not leader material. You're not at that status yet. So be careful when you asking God to help you prophesy and bless you with leadership and bless you with money and bless you with that because you're not there yet. If somebody curses you to their face, and God tells you, give them a cup of cold water. And you say, no, nah, I ain't doing that. They, they ain't say sorry. You not Christ-like material. What I'm telling you is that nothing should be able to change what God revealed to you is right. If something can change it, that means that you are fake. It means that you are a snake and it means that the spirit of God is not really in you. He's with you because he's giving you a chance, but he's not in you. If anybody can change your velocity, your love, your trust, your passion, if anybody can change your servanthood, it is proof that you're not real. You are a conditional snake and you really don't have it in your heart to serve God. You just doing it because you feel like the conditions are meeting what you prefer to do it. I've been in ministry for years and I've served God underneath heavy warfare. I've served God underneath heavy slander. I remember doing meetings in Atlanta, 2016. I remember having LGBT come against me. I remember having people saying, we're going to come to your conference and rally against you. We, we're going to stop this meeting. And I, I didn't share nothing with nobody until afterwards, probably. And then I did a meet, meet in Houston afterwards last year in Atlanta, Georgia. I had the same opposition come and I, I didn't say nothing. There was a little white boy came up there. He was a white man, but a little white boy came up there. And he got jacked up and he flew in the air because he didn't know that my security was about it, about it. And my security, all they did was just watch my facial expression. They just saw my face switch. When my face switched and I threw the little paper, they... <laughs> now, let me just say this. I never stop the way that I serve God. Nothing changes me. Nothing changes me. But for a lot of people, things change them. You understand? Things can take them out of the element of doing what God says. But for me, nothing changes me. Saints, oftentimes God will let your leader go through stuff so that you can develop what your leader is mastering. The Lord will let you see your leader get attacked so that you can watch your leader's response. W what are their response? Are they really pure? Because if they're not pure, you're going to see them fall away. Because even the Bible talk about how the how when Satan attacks. If somebody build their house upon the sinking sand and not Jesus, you're going to see them crumble. You're going to see them fall away. So Jesus will stage anything so that you can see what people are working with. Because if they are really of God, you'll see them get stronger and stronger and stronger. If they're not of God, you'll see them fall by the wayside. You'll see them lose influence. You'll see them lose wisdom. You'll see them lose zeal and servanthood. But if they're of God, you'll see them go higher and higher and higher. I want to continue this. 
because I, I really want you to make it in this life. I want to continue this. I want you to make it. I've seen too many people not make it. I want you to make it. There's no reason for you not to make it and you're underneath such a powerful man of God. It's, it's no reason at all. It's no reason at all. I can understand if you didn't have a fortified um, source that you can lean on, but you have it. I want to continue this. I'll go live in uh, 21 minutes.